We're in the Cirrus Vision Jet to have a quick look at working some of the features of the Garmin G3000. If you've used the G1000 or other platforms and are transitioning to the G3000 or just curious about what's going on with it, we'll briefly check out how to enter a flight plan into the unit. We're on the ramp at Jackson Hole and we want to fly to Van Nuys in California. We won't be filing or receiving a clearance here, but we could choose a route we might expect to get by looking at FlightAware. On the home page, we'll enter the airport pair and we can see that there are a number of flights from Jackson Hole to Van Nuys. One of them, this Gulfstream, is actually en route right now as we're recording this. If we scroll down, we can see the IFR route in the flight data box. Let's use this for our flight plan. The Vision Jet uses the Cirrus Perspective Touch System with a PFD and MFD and three touch screens below. It's the center touch screen we'll look at for loading the flight plan. It's a fairly straightforward process, especially if you've used similar systems, but the order of what we put in can make a difference. Here's one way to do it. We'll start by tapping flight plan. We'll begin with the origin, assuming that isn't automatically populated off of our GPS position here. Jackson Hole is KJAC. We can add our destination to KVNY. The pink line and arrow now shows that our active GPS leg is from Jackson Hole to Van Nuys, which makes sense since there are only two waypoints so far. Moving in sequence now, we can add a departure. Let's hit PROC for that. We're assigned the Alpine 3, which is already populated. We should know which runway to expect from the winds, or sometimes clearance delivery will pass this along, but the Alpine 3 only uses runway 19, so that's what we'll be departing off of. We'll hit load and then back to see that populated in the flight plan. The active leg shown by the pink line and arrow is now runway 19 to the user waypoint, which is programmed by the GPS to be the point along runway heading when we should hit 400 AGL and should turn as depicted to 200 to intercept the radial to Kickney. One thing the real unit will do that's not simulated here is populate altitude restrictions. The SID tells us we must cross Kickney at 15,000 feet or hold until reaching that altitude. We could set this restriction by clicking the box next to Kickney and entering 15,000 feet. Now we could start adding the en route portion of our flight. First up is LHO, the Brigham City VOR. We should only see the one in the US, but the simulator has all the nav aids globally programmed into it. So we pick the appropriate one. After that is MLF, Milford. Next, we have an airway. The way to input airways is to tap the starting point of it, here it's Milford, and then tap load airway. When we tap airway, we see all airways that run through this point. We'll select ours, Jet 107. Now we choose where we exit the airway. On this flight plan, it's barrel, then load airway. Next on the route is going direct to the dottle intersection. And from there, we join another airway, Q96, taking that to the purse intersection. This is where our arrival kicks in. Notice we've already input the entry point for the arrival, so the transition we select will be the same, purse. We hit proc, and we're selecting the Janney 5 into Van Nuys. Then we'll tap transition and select purse. After we load that, we go back into the flight plan and see the route. From purse, it takes us onto the arrival and all the points along it. It's important to enter the en route points, especially the transition, before entering the arrival. If you do the arrival first and then enter the transition as an en route fix or leave it off altogether, it might cause a discontinuity in the flight plan, like on this one, because the unit won't know how to get from that Q96 airway to the arrival. Again, as with the SID, we should have all altitude restrictions populated in, but as that's not simulated here, we could input some, starting with the first one, 24,000 at Krem, to help with descent planning. So that's a very quick rundown on flight planning on the G3000 perspective. Nothing crazy complicated, even with a full IFR route with SID, stars, and airways, but procedure still matters.